Great, thank you, Sarah, and thank you, Matt, for allowing us to speak today um, about a pretty important topic. Um, but, but before I get going, um, let me just um, do a quick introduction of myself. I work for AWS Robotics. I'm the business development manager supporting the education market. Joining me today here, Camilo Biscarin, and he's our Ross Evangelist. So super, again, super excited to be here today. And, um, and, and let's get started here. Um, you know, you're all probably aware the use of robotic, robots is growing um, due to technological advances that support the increase in the number of applications and use cases. Um, industrial robotics have been around for years, arms and so on. You guys all know it, guys and girls know all know it. Um, and they're beginning to, you know, hit a lot of different market segments, logistics, construction, consumer, home energy, and so on. And as you can see by those, um, quotes I have here, um, we're looking at really significant growth here, especially look at 2030, 70% of all mobile material handling equipment will be autonomous. So we are on um, a growth vector here that probably has not been seen in robotics to date. Um, Global management company, uh, consulting company McKinsey referred to the need for robotics education as a license for operating in the future. Their advisory went on to note the responsibility to manage large scale shifting capabilities lies with the robotics companies, governments defining the education, universities and academic and vocational training. Growth in the robotics industry is creating a huge demand for skilled labor. In another report, McKinsey cited three growth drivers for industrial robotics. The first was the availability of talent with the requisite skill to bring robots online. Training at scale is critical for individual workers, companies, and national economies alike to creating value and ensuring competitiveness in the future. The IFR, um, International Federation of Robotics, if you has, haven't heard of that um, body, has recommended the governments and companies around the globe focus on providing the right skills necessary to work with robots and intelligent automation systems. We're looking at this as being the call to action for robotic education. And while progress is being made in education, we must continue to expand education offerings to all learners and leveraging all possible means. Robotics education market is currently a $1.3 billion market set to grow to 3.1 billion by 2025. The market is comprised of instructional programs, physical platforms, training, and educational resources. There is no one size fits all solution for robotics education, nor a single cohort of learners to focus on. Instructional technology, curriculum, pedagogy need to fit learning objectives, ultimately the need of the learner at many levels and ages. The IFR that I mentioned before has recommended that robotics OEMs and system integrators focus their promotion activities on convincing companies, governments, and societies at large of the fact that robotic related retraining at scale is critical, not just for individual workers, but for companies, students, and economies as a whole to create value and ensuring competitiveness in the future. This focus must occur in our academic institutions as well. From K-12 to doctoral programs, we must work to ensure robotics courses are integrated with engineering and computer science disciplines. And we must expand offerings to include robotics, undergraduate majors, and graduate programs. The AWS Robotics EDU program was created a little more than two years ago. Since its inception, we've engaged educators to gain insights into the robotics education landscape. We refined our focus to undergrad and grad program, which is where ROS and robotics application development are predominantly being taught by partners partnering with AWS Educate 
and pursuing several key strategies. The program is on a path to help democratize robotics and provide support to the Ross community. Working with Dr. Alberto Quattrini Lee, Assistant Professor of Computer Science and Autonomous Mobile Robotics at Dartmouth College, AWS Robotics is offering a cloud robotics curriculum through AWS Educate platform and available in the AWS Robotics GitHub repo. The curriculum is aligned to the AWS RoboMaker platform and an NVIDIA Jetson Nano based robot offering by Waveshare designed to be extensible for the education market. The combined curriculum, platform, and robot offering will lower the barrier to and democratize robotics education by providing introductory level curriculum, access to AWS RoboMaker, and at no charge to educators and students, and make available a personal robot offering for less than the cost of a college textbook. So I'm gonna just dive a bit deeper into the components of the program. First, cloud robotics curriculum. It's comprised of eight modules currently, and we've got a backlog forming, which include the fundamentals, getting ready, getting your environment set up, ROS2 basics, simulation, deployment, and a robotics application development project. First four modules are built and available as badges in AWS Educate, or available in our GitHub repo. The balance are scheduled for release very, very soon. The curriculum will be open source as we want it to be a resource for the community, used for guided learning or as modules to support an existing curriculum. Next up, we have the AWS RoboMaker ROS2 Jetbot. For the robot, we commissioned WaveShare to build out their current JetBot SKU and offer an extensible learning platform comprised of a camera, LiDAR, speaker, and microphone. We're also making simulation super easy by including simulation models. NVIDIA is a sponsor of this initiative with us. And then there's the RoboMaker Suite. We're leveraging core components of the AWS RoboMaker platform. RoboMaker's Cloud9 based IDE supports ROS Kinetic, ROS Melodic releases, and also has support for ROS2 dashing. We've also built cloud extensions to our AI services in the cloud, which make it super easy for a ROS based application to call services in the cloud. RoboMaker brings cloud to scale simulations. Benefits include the ability to run hundreds of concurrent simulations with the RoboMaker batch API, fully managed AWS infrastructure, which enables you to run your simulations consistently and reliably. With by the minute pay-as-you-go pricing, you only pay for simulations where you, when you are using them. And of course, for students and educators, it's free. And finally, the ease of integration with the breadth of AWS services enables you to connect your ROS application and tooling with services like CloudWatch Logs and Code Pipeline. The RoboMaker service leverages AWS IoT Greengrass technology for fleet deployments, making robot deployments easier by putting you in control of the deployment schedules. So what's your call to action? Here are five for you to pursue after this session. Check out our robotics blog for more detail on the curriculum and its location on AWS Educate and our GitHub repo. AWS Educate is Amazon's global initiative to provide students and educators with the resources needed to accelerate cloud-related learning. The ROS2 reference robot is available from Waveshare and of course, available on amazon.com. So go buy one today. RoboMaker platform details are available on the RoboMaker website. And look for an announcement from the Construct and AWS Robotics about the first RoboMaker course on the Construct. We're super excited to be working with Ricardo Telez. At this point, thank you very much for listening. And I think we have a few minutes for questions if anybody has any.
Do you know what the main advantage of the jet bot versus the turtle bot would be? Um, price point, extensibility for two, right there. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? I guess Sarah, I was right. I'm going to give you back some time. Yeah, and unfortunately, our, our next speaker hasn't joined the, the session yet, as far as I can tell from people's names. Okay. Any other questions about AWS Robotics, the curriculum, our bot, or the platform? No, we're looking forward to getting oh, rolled over. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, we're just looking oh, forward to getting rolled over to the new one. Um, you know, we had the meeting with Matt, and um, we're hopefully going to pilot the the new release in time to get it moved over for the next Ross Industrial Training. So. Yeah, no, we're super super excited about that, Matt. And those features should be uh, we'll be announcing those um, fairly soon on our on our website. What I was about to ask is, you know, one of the things that Matt was Matt brought up when we were talking earlier was, you know, how do we train people that aren't necessarily, you know, going to be developers, like they could be technicians or just, you know, make small minor tweaks to, you know, maybe like calibration or other sorts of things like that. So does uh, AWS or Amazon have any thoughts on, you know, those kinds of things for people that aren't going to be developers, but that still need exposure to robotics as a whole and need to know a little bit about ROS to make those changes? Yeah, hey, that's a great question. And I, you know, I think I, I had a couple of points related to that in that um, definitely not a one size fits all approach to curriculum here. Um, the learner is going to be very diverse here. Um, I actually I was I was talking to a teacher last week that has fifth graders coding in C on a robot, um, which kind of just blew me away. Um, it was humbling. Um, so from our curriculum perspective, you know, there are a lot of different directions to go with curriculum. We decided to kind of go right down the middle. Um, let's just get a basic curriculum out there. So, you know, to your point about someone who isn't going to be necessarily a roboticist or do robotics development, a, a basic curriculum is going to help that person get to where they need to go from a training perspective. So, you know, we want to ground people in fundamentals of robotics. Um, we think they should know a little bit about Python. We think they should appreciate what an on-prem dev environment looks like and, and kind of the pain of, of configuring one and how you do it. Um, we'd like to show them a dev environment in the cloud, mainly ours. Um, we'd like to show them simulation. A um, little bit about that. Um, over the air uh, updates are certainly going to be part of their world. And then last but not least, a, um, a, a project which isn't overly complicated. So, you know, this could be a good beginning point for someone heading to a career in um, robotics or even robotics research, but I think it, it would provide a foundation for somebody that is, is going more into the operations and, and technical support of robots as well. Yeah, thanks for that answer. Sure. It. Yeah, so for, so for those um, that, are, that are tracking, right? So we've had a number of even tech schools now ask about, hey, what is there as technicians start encountering more ROS enabled, we'll say, uh, equipment on factory floors, you know, because a number of technician programs now are actually starting to show and roll out uh, exposure to Python. So there could be opportunities as we think about the sort of ROS training, if you will, for roles beyond developers. Uh, and it's definitely something that's on our roadmap. And I'll, I'll be touching on a little bit tomorrow during some of the member sessions about some of the learning and some of the outputs for the ARM Institute project or ARM Institute project that uh, influenced that. And we've already, I think, you know, with AWS, I think we've made some introductions with the workforce development side of the ARM Institute as well um, about robot, advanced robotics, say, training curriculum and resources. So I, I think there's a lot of opportunity here, Jack, and I appreciate you taking the time. It's nice to meet you, uh, sort of face-to-face, -face, if you will. I look forward to getting up into the Northwest and, and meeting a few of the team members and reconnecting with Matt Hansen and, and everybody up there. So Excellent. thanks again. and. 
Obviously, uh, if anyone has questions, you know, feel free to either put them in the chat 